Oh? Mr. President? Yes. This is General Eisenhower. I'm so glad to hear you. How are you feeling? Uh, well, I've been pretty good, but uh, I wanted to tell you about a dilemma I'm in. All right. Uh, we have a man, Mamie and I had this uh, nice invitation for the, for the 14th one for yes, Prime, yes, Prime Minister yes, Sato. Yes. Well, I, that happens to be her birthday, oh. and I had to finally tell her <laughs> that I had planned this little surprise party for her with some Nevins and the other <laughs> guests around here. So I'm in a little hell of a push. Mr. <laughs> well, you just do go on, you do whatever you think you ought to do and give her that birthday because she comes first ahead of Sato, doesn't well, she? Well, as a matter of fact, she didn't, didn't so much. I had to tell her about it because she was writing it to uh, Mrs. Johnson this morning. But I had to tell her then about her party. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind. I could uh, break up the party except uh, she wouldn't mind. She would uh, be all right. But the guests, I don't... <laughs> Yeah. I made quite a fuss of them. No, them. I wouldn't do that. Now, what we want, though, to do, General, here's our problem. We don't want to tax you one ounce. At the same time, anything that happens here, yep. we want you and Ms. Eisenhower to be included if it would be enjoyable. Now, you can't call up and say, I'd like to do this or do that. And we never know. But yep. we thought with the Japanese uh, that uh, we, we would uh, we would uh, urge it. But, well, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, they were ve they've been very kind. They've uh, invited me back there several times, they say, with the emperor's uh, approval and to come over. But I never felt like doing it because... Um, I'd wanted Ms. Eisenhower to go, and she won't fly, so it means a long ocean by boy. <laughs> well, I wanted you to come, and I wanted you to see. Uh, I wanted you to see this new portrait. I'm just so proud of it. It hangs right to, down the steps when we come down from upstairs, oh, I see. and it's right behind all the pictures that we take uh, when we're with the head of state. When we stop at the end of the stairs. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, yeah. Yeah, and the photographers look at the people standing there. Right above it is your picture, and I like it. I like it much better than I do the other one. Well, as a matter of fact, I do too, except uh, it's such so bland. I like a face that's got a little bit more lines in it. Oh no, I thought this is good. I now, just this is. Uh, this is the fellow that I know. I, I just stood there last night, had my picture made with it last night. It's a wonderful picture. And I wrote over Harry Darby and thanked him for uh, uh, sending it in here. It looks like you're going to run for office uh, here in 68. we got so many old pictures around. Well, and, I tell you, <laughs> you know uh, one thing, Mr. President? I don't believe it's, be, it's, the, it's against the Constitution to me for running your vice president. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you this. I think you're the best qualified man in this country for anything. I told a group the other day that you're the only fellow that I knew that knew as much as my Joint Chiefs of Staff and knew more than I did. <laughs> well, how, uh, how have you been, Mr. President? I'm doing fine under the circumstances. Uh, uh, we're getting this government off uh, reasonably good. We, I, want, I don't want them to bother you, but I sure do want them to keep you informed. And I told McNamara to go see you because I thought it would be good for McNamara. I think that uh, uh, he and General Goodpaster, Goodpaster is just wonderful, but I thought maybe uh, a little touch of you uh, giving your views and philosophizing with this fellow would be a little helpful. We got a project we call Buttercup yep. uh, that uh, shows that the South Vietnamese are kind of playing a little bit with the uh, with the uh, uh, NLF and uh, uh, talking to them about exchanging prisoners and we got some exchanged uh, yesterday for the first time and then they, they're talking about how they might talk and uh, this fellow Chu, uh, most of the people think, I'm not very good at evaluating, but most of the folks think Westmoreland and, and Bunker and them. Uh, and incidentally, Mr. President, I think we got the best team we could have in, oh, in I, those I people out there. Fine. So I just have confidence in them and I try to support them. But they think that Chu's going to be better than Key. He's a little more reserved and a little more judicious and a little tougher and maybe not quite so gay and uh, yeah. showmanship. Yeah. You know? And so we're working on that a good deal, and uh, I'm having a meeting. I just called it now for 11:30 to uh, talk to Rusk and uh, McNamara and them uh, again about to releasing some more prisoners. They want some more exchanges. So that is rather encouraging. It is. General Bradley just came back. He says that they're from uh, Vietnam, and oh. he says they got. 
12 and 13 year old kids and the report from Bunker this week shows that uh, one province out of Saigon in the third core area that made up of about 500,000 people and the Viet Cong have just picked up and evacuated they can't live they run out of food and the oh, battalion yeah. splitting up so all of these little things and uh, we're afraid to say it because they hit our credibility and no. if it doesn't come true why uh, this happens if you want to know the truth what we've been doing I've been suffering a terrific onslaught by Bobby Kennedy uh, I wouldn't tell this to any other Republican but Bobby has organized and he, uh, Bill Paley's son-in-law in New York with CBS, uh, uh, called a meeting, and Bobby's lawyer, Van der Heuvel, who traveled over to Europe with him when he got this peace feeler and all that stuff, uh, they got a lot of money in, and they got Martin Luther King, and uh, they raised the money, and they turned it over to him, and they sent him to all these cities. And he went around, and he gets out of them before the trouble begins, but he went around all over the cities, and... That's caused me a lot of problems in the cities this year. Then they've got the ADA and the Harvard uh, uh, group uh, going around and saying, well, we got to jump Johnson. So yeah. they've got our own people plucking that we ought to get out of the war and that they're not dependable and that the generals are taking over. And and uh, it's been quite a problem for them in my own group. Then I started getting hit by the cases and the Mortons and so forth. And yeah. uh, it kind of looked like everybody was turning in. When you and uh, you all formed your committee and made a little statement that arrested, then you came out and said, well, no, nah, I just don't, uh, I'm not, uh, I got more information than anybody in this country. <laughs> you didn't say that, but everybody knew and they looked at you. You'd been every military job we had and been president, but I don't know enough to criticize the commander in chief and the generals in the field and bunker and men like that. I just want to, I want to know more about what I'm talking about. That kind of settled it a little bit. And, uh, but we just had hell and these college students, I've had Hoover in after them and uh, Ho Chi Minh sent a bunch of them over here wires in April and he, uh, he got this fellow Dellinger and uh, he's properly named too, uh, and this Ms. Wilson and uh, yeah, uh, Stokey cool. Carmichael, and he asked him to come over there, and they got over there last spring, and they sat down and planned these demonstrations in Rome and in Bonn and in uh, London and the United States, so forth, all on the same day, and. Uh, they laid out their plans, and then they sent to our American delegates and a number of the other delegates to Czechoslovakia and to Germany and to London and to Paris and to Rome, and they met with people there, and they started planning, and they came to this country, and they, they, our folks came back home, and it was pretty much of a fizz until they got into colleges. And they got into colleges, and they got the Galbraiths and the liberal groups yeah. and the preachers, and the preachers have been in all these moves. 1812, they tried to, uh, they tell, told Madison that the, that the British were right and he ought to surrender. And they told Lincoln that he ought to go over to the, con surrender to the Confederacy. And they, they gave Wilson hell. And World War II, a lot of the preachers and the teachers did the same thing. Well, anyway, they came, marched here, and we arrested 600 of them. And we gave 29 of them pretty tough times. Uh, we found most of them uh, really were mentally diseased. Hoover's taking 256 that turned in supposedly their draft card, and about 50 of them are college professors who had been examined for the draft by the Army and turned back as kids. And uh, uh, then a good many of the young kids. So you're dealing with mental problems, yeah. uh, kind of like uh, the Oswald deal. Uh, yeah. uh, and then they get a lot of innocent folks that come in. Now, how much of that we can expose, what we ought to do about it? I called the Attorney General last night. I think he's been a little easy himself. That's why I hit crime so hard yesterday. I think it, we talk too damn much about civil liberties and constitutional rights of the individual and not enough about the rights of the masses. So okay. I talked to Dirksen the other night, and he's been just like you have. He loves his country, and he don't pay attention to the politics. Yeah, well, I, uh, I tell these people, look, I said, if I'd have been in the same position of responsibility, I might have been, done some other things differently, but that's a question of judgment. That's why we have. We were freely elected people, and we've got to stand behind them. I I really, I've been um, consulting with my uh, some of my publishers, whether I shouldn't put an article on it. Yet. I wish you would. That would be the best thing you could do if you could get to life or look or 
some of them to just take it, or if you would have another interview on television. Yeah. If you just answer the questions and just take it up, and Bunker's coming in here. If you oh. could sit down with Bunker. You know Bunker? Oh, very well. Well, he was... He was an ambassador when I was president in India. Well, he was a Republican businessman in Vermont that made a good deal of money, somebody said, and decided he wanted to retire, and he retired, and then they started pulling him into the government for every tough assignment. <laughs> and Dominican Republic, uh, it was impossible, but he went down there, and all those commies, there were three groups of them, Chinese, Castro, and well, Soviet, and he whooped them all. Well, and he says that he's bringing this thing through. I'd like you to see him when he comes back. He's going to be here in about 10 days. Well, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going out to California in the oh, yeah. uh, first December. I'm, I'm jealous of you. I want to, I want to quit and come out there and, <laughs> and play golf myself. Yeah, well, I tell you, I'll be here through November, though. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, if you are and uh, you can, I'd like to send him over there and spend yeah. 30 minutes with Well, him. I tell you, I am, uh, I, I, I get my briefings that I've had. I'm very much encouraged on the military side of this, and particularly uh, what does uh, please me is the increasing percentage of those people that have the courage to go and vote. Yes, and uh, they're, they're, that shows that they've, they're getting greater confidence. Uh, General, we took us from 1776, 1789 to get a constitution in this country, That's and right. we had all that Anglo-Saxon heritage and background That's and right. freedom. Now, these people in 13 months have had five elections, and we've shoved them, and Bunker shoved them, maybe a little too fast, Westmoreland. But the fact is that uh, they have a higher percentage of their total people voting than we have, and they've had five elections, and they've ratified a constitution, and they've elected the House and Senate, and the President and Vice President, and I think that's pretty encouraging. Uh, for... I do, too. As a matter of fact, uh, in this thing I've been writing on, that's what I'm, I'm tip putting a great stress on that. If you, uh, if you could have a television interview, or if you could have, a, if you could write an article for one of the magazines, Look Alive, uh, uh, just whatever this Whatever information we have, General Goodpaster, just bring it and lay it down for you and, and have any people that you want to talk to. And when Bunker comes back, you might hang it on after you've just visited with him. You can just say you sent for Bunker and ask to see him, that you want the reports sure. direct. And well, I tell you, I, the, the, uh, one of the networks uh, is uh, we're, we're working on now on a meeting on that very right thing in hours. Well, I just think uh, there's nobody in this country that has uh, the respect to the government uh, are that they respect the people any more than you do. Not not another human being. And, uh, well, uh, I, I'm to that I, I think your government. Don't... I think your government's in trouble, General. I think it's in, I don't want to say this. You wouldn't want to say it when you were head of it. But I think we're in more danger from these left-wing influences now than we've ever been in 37 years I've been here. Well, and they're working in my party from within. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bobby thinks he's going to get the nomination in, in the convention. He's what, the, uh, uh, do you know the name of that uh, son-in-law of Bill Paley? You... Yes, sir, named Burden, B-U-R-D-E-N. D-U-R-D-E-N. -E yes, sir, and I'll tell you how I know about it. I've got copies of uh, Bobby's uh, uh, le uh, lawyers, this fellow Vanderhoof's level, le letters on Martin Luther King, which I'll send you copies of, uh, uh, writing to people, asking them to come, and Charlie Englehart, who's head of Englehart Industries up in New Jersey, yes. uh, went to the meeting and agreed to give Martin Luther King some money for civil rights. He thought he was helping the Negro. And the, the, the damn fellow went out of Chicago next week and announced that he was uh, trying to destroy Johnson. So Englehart got mad and called him up and asked him, told him he didn't want to give his money. Hmm. Well, I tell you, I, um, I know those people up there in CBS pretty well. And, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll get my nickels worth it, and you can bet on that. This, uh, this young, he married Paley's daughter. You know? And it's this young jet set, this society oh, right, set, sir. and uh, they don't like anybody, you know, from uh, away from the East Coast. But I tell you, my, Mr. President, I'm a damn good Republican. But if I tell you, if ever they, if ever they uh, have, want that uh, little pipsqueak to uh, the President of the United States, by golly, I'm really going to get on the on the. Things and I'm really going to work. Well, that's what they're trying to do, and uh, and if I didn't run. And I haven't at all concluded I would, but if I did, we'd just take it in a walk. And uh, I just, uh, I think the Republicans could beat him if they didn't fight among themselves. And, uh, but this boy is awfully vicious. And when you oh, agree he with him, uh, he, he is absolutely ruthless. If you look at the people that he doesn't like, nearly that he doesn't like, nearly.